So I'm joined today with Neil Ashdown, who is currently doing a PhD in cybersecurity at Royal Holloway. He's previously been an editor and an analyst for a company that did defense and security. Um, so thank you so much for joining me today, Neil, from the wonders of my living room. Uh, Unfortunately, last week uh, you got. If you'd come last week, you'd have had my son's bedroom, but this week is is my lounge. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's great um, to be joining you from the wonders of my kitchen. <laughs> you got to love lockdown. Um, so um, I've just got a couple of questions to ask you, really, if that's all right, about kind of your journey to where you are now, uh, and kind of some of your experiences in the world of work. Um, so could you give us a, a little rundown of what your journey to this point has been so far? Okay. So when I was at school, I did, uh, I think, primarily humanities studies. I was interested in things like history, politics, English literature. Uh, when I went to university, I applied to do a course that followed on from that interest in politics. So I did a PP uh, degree at Oxford. Uh, and within that, I focused on the philosophy and the politics side of things. After university, I applied for a job working at the company you mentioned, the Defence and Security yeah. Publishers uh, in London. Um, and I did a variety of uh, different jobs in that company, starting from quite a sort of entry level position, basically as a fact checker and a proofreader, and then working as an analyst looking at um, primarily uh, political and security risk in Asia, and then finally as the editor of one of the company's magazines looking at uh, security and intelligence issues. Yeah. And then I stopped doing that a couple of years ago and just started this uh, PhD program. That's brilliant. Yeah. So uh, it's quite a quite a very career. That's brilliant. Um, so. I'm I'm sure that um, obviously I know what the answer is, um, but for uh, people that aren't uh, aren't quite uh, aware, what what is a doctorate? So a doctorate is a, a postgraduate uh, qualification, and it would generally I think follow on from uh, doing a master's. So I think for many people you do your undergrad degree, then you would perhaps stay and do another master's for perhaps a, a year or two years, depending on the program, and then you might want to continue and go on and do a doctorate. Uh, the one I'm doing is four years because there is an initial. Uh, one year training year to try and bring people into the subject of cyber security but I think uh, perhaps a standard length would be three although it does vary by subject. So um, so what's your course entail then your cyber security course? So there's a, a general problem in the UK which is that we don't have enough people uh, who are skilled uh, to work in the field of cyber security and partly that's a technical problem so we don't have people who have perhaps the maths or the, uh, the computer science skills. But there's also a broader issue. I mean, cybersecurity is a, a socio-technical issue. And so we need people from a whole host of different backgrounds and areas of expertise to come and work in this field. Because of that, the government has set up a number of research centres and centres in doctoral training around the UK. And the one that I'm at at Royal Holloway is one of those centres of doctoral training. So as I said, it's a four year programme. First year is uh, we followed the Masters in Information Security, so quite a technical course designed to make sure that everyone had a sort of a basic understanding of some of the more technical aspects of cybersecurity. But then uh, the, the group of people I'm doing it with are all sort of going off and pursuing different aspects of the subject uh, in line with their interests. So we have mathematicians, cryptographers, and then people like me who are perhaps more on the politics and uh, history side of things. So uh, what kind of area are you focusing on for your, for your research? So in my previous role, I was looking at um, the way that the digital revolution and cybersecurity have affected the work of uh, intelligence services around the world and the, the kind of things that they do to protect societies and to collect information. And so uh, what I'm looking at in my PhD is the way it, it is looking at that problem in more detail effectively. How has uh, how how do the technologies which we all use every day to communicate and to talk to each other like this, how has that shaped the work of that part of the national security community? Oh, brilliant. Um, so what does so while you're kind of carrying out your PhD, what does a, an average day look like for you? Well, it's uh, it varies. I think it's the interesting <laughs> uh, standard answer that first year uh, when we were following the um, the masters, um, it was very much like going back to university for me. So um, it was sitting in lecture halls. It was doing coursework uh, and lots of reading around that. Now that we're moving on into our uh, areas of individual uh, study, it's a lot of independent study. So I spend a lot of time sitting and reading, trying to work out what's been done previously in the field and where there are areas where there could be original research done or whether a problem is still to solve. But it is yeah. very varied. And um, one thing about doing it, any sort of, I think, higher education program is that there will always be the core uh, project that you're there to do, the subject you're there to yeah. study, and then there's a whole host of activities around that that you can get into if you choose to. So uh, kind of carrying out doctorate research does allow you to take that that broad spread and, and uh, focus on an area that really does tailor to your interests? 
Absolutely. When you with the project that you're doing, I think the goal. Excuse me, I saw clattering past them. <laughs> the project you're doing, the goal is really to become a, a really uh, a, an expert in a, probably quite a narrow field. But mm. I think for anyone who's thinking about a career further on in academia or in uh, industry and in, uh, professional sort of, uh, that that side of things you will inevitably have to be able to uh, deal with different sorts of problems, work with different sort of groups of people. And so I think uh, while it's really good to have that kind of specialisation, it's also good to acquire the skills that uh, allow you to do a variety of different things as well. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Um, so going back to your kind of broad uh, career or your career up to this point, um, or even your life up to this point, I guess, is what would you consider to be uh, kind of your career highlights? Um, and was it something that you made happen for yourself or something that was kind of uh, made for you? So uh, in my uh, previous company, when I was working on the magazine, um, the way it worked is that we would have a certain number of features every edition, most magazines. You would, um, there would be quite a complex process for getting read those, those articles ready. So you'd have to think of the topic that you were going to work on. You'd have to find someone who was an expert on it. You'd have to bring all these very various different elements together. You'd have to uh, get the design right for the magazine. You'd have to sort of bring in various different data analysis tools and bits of technology to supplement the analysis and so on and so forth. And so you were doing that over and over again. And when you got it right, when we produced something which was sort of a, a perhaps a, a, an exclusive, so something that hadn't previously been seen in uh, open sources, um, yeah. that was always uh, really exciting. To answer your question, was that sort of was that luck or did you make that happen? Well, yeah. th there's always luck in everything. Um, the way I think about it is that by having spent so much time working as a team to to bring together sort of different areas of expertise and to bring together different skill sets and processes, we were in a we made it so we were in a position to exploit that those lucky events when they occurred. That's it. Yeah. So it's uh, it's one of those phrases is you 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 make your own luck. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we um, used to do quite a lot of stuff with um, satellite imagery. That was one of the most interesting aspects of my work. Mm. So use commercially available, so uh, freely available satellite imagery to look at, um, for example, perhaps a, a nuclear weapons program in a country. And you would have a team of people who were trained to use that imagery to analyze what was going on. And um, satellite obviously only passes over certain times. Uh, and if it's cloudy, depending on the satellite, you might not get that picture. Yeah. So if you didn't get the picture, then you wouldn't have the story. But conversely, just because you had the picture didn't mean that you necessarily were able to produce a really good story. That's the school. That's a yeah. That's a really nice way to describe that. That's lovely. Thank you. <laughs> um, so uh, obviously you're you're currently working towards your PhD, um, and uh, you I presume you've, you've got the undergraduate and a master's uh, qualification. No, I didn't do a master's. I uh, did do a master's. undergrad straight into the world of work, and then came to PhD. PhD. So it was a bit of a uh, a change of position. <laughs> yeah. Um, what qualifications then have you earned other than uh, other than your undergraduate and your and your working towards your doctorate? Are there any other qualifications you've got or do they tend to be more learn on the job and upskill as you go? So the area I was working in, there are not so many uh, professional qualifications. Um, some of the people I went to university with went off to become uh, lawyers, for example, or accountants. And obviously in that case, mm. there's a very clear progression yes. of professional qualifications. Um, there isn't really uh, the same thing in the field of uh, analysis or uh, publishing journalism and in a way that's sort of that makes it easier because you don't have to do the exams you don't have to pay to do the exams obviously uh, of course. Factor. but it also means that if within your own career and uh, in the development of your uh, working relationships you have to sometimes i think work a little bit harder or do something to demonstrate that you have those skills and capabilities which if there were professional qualifications you could achieve and demonstrate through acquiring those qualifications that's brilliant. Um, so uh, try not to be uh, trying not to put a negative spin on the thing, but um, in your in your career, have you faced any kind of major setbacks or redirections? Um, and if so, how how did you deal with those? Well, I worked in this uh, this role for uh, over 10 years and obviously any length of time you spend in any sort of organization or even uh, any sort of uh, social uh, function over that length of time. Yeah. The roles and interactions that people have will change. So there were certainly periods where I was doing things which perhaps were not what I wanted to end up doing. And um, I think the way to think about it is that uh, it's good to have a certain amount of resilience and to be able to say to yourself that although I'm not currently in the position I would want to be or doing the thing that I want to do, or you've perhaps experienced some sort of setback, you've been told, well, you can't do this for a little bit. 
having a certain amount of resilience that means you can say, well, I'm going to stick with this and keep going because I think in the future I'm going to be able to get to that position can be very useful. Um, but conversely, if you realise that you're, the path you're on is not going to get you to the place you want to be, the ability to recognise that and change your, uh, and make a decision to change your path is very powerful. But it's, it's knowing which one is which, and that's, 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 that's it. That's it, it's, it's walking that tightrope, isn't it?